Section 2. Misusing C-sharp primitives. In C-sharp, we have a lot of primitive types like integer, long, string, boolean, car, and they are perhaps one of the most commonly used types. In this section, we will look at common mistakes with C-sharp primitives. Misusing date time. Let's look at the general usage of date time. As you probably know, we get the current time by using the static property of date time called now. If we invoke datetime.now, we get the current date time. An alternative way to construct date time is to use new date time. And this constructor, if you don't add any parameters, by default it will give you 1 AD, which is the minimum default value possible for date time type. Please note that date time is a value type. So, if we inspect this constructor, we can see it has several overloads. It can take year, month, day, or even you can specify a calendar, or you can even specify hour, minute, and second. Finally, you can specify a date time kind. Date time kind allows you to specify this date time is a local time or in UTC format. By default, if you don't specify it, the default value will be unspecified. Though in general, developers, developers do not set date time kind. Actually, it is not as useful as people think, in practice at least. The second date time type in .NET Framework is date time offset. And this is, in addition to date time, also offers an offset, which is like plus two, plus three, and you can specify a particular date time and offset combination together. Generally, when you work with different time zones, it may be a good idea to use date time offset. However, please note that date time offset is not magical and it does not contain any zone data. It's just a combination of date time and offset. That's all. Finally, you can get the underlying ticks by using the ticks property of date time. Each tick represents one nanosecond that is passed since from 1 AD. And this is the actual underlying data structure that represents the date time. This is the only value date time holds. If you need Java interoperability, you will notice ticks in Java is two days shorter than .NET version. The reason being is, when there was a transition between Julian calendar to Gregorian calendar, at that time, there has been two days cut from the calendar. .NET does not take that into account, and whereas Java takes that two days into account. So, if you have interoperability scenarios with Java, be careful when it comes to ticks. Next, we will look at how to measure time. The wrong way to do so, if you're going to measure something, you get the current date time at starting point, and you get another date time when the job is done. And you basically you subtract. However, this is wrong. The reason being is, the resolution of date time now is not that great. For example, if your work is less than 30 milliseconds, then there's a good possibility that your start and end date times will be pointing to the exact same ticks. As I stated, this is because the resolution of date time now is not that great. How to do it correctly? Use a stopwatch. Stopwatch class is a static method called start new, and then whenever you wish, you can get the current time span by using stopwatch.elapse property. And this is the correct way to measure time passed for a particular activity. Lastly, I will talk about scheduling. So if you think of a scenario, whereas we have to schedule a task, every day at 1.45 a.m. However, suppose that you are scheduling this task in London and if you use a regular date time, then there's a possibility you may end up with a daylight saving time change. That is between 1 a.m. and 2 a.m. Actually, the clock shifts to 2 a.m. instantaneously, which means on the day for daylight saving time, there is no such time called 1.45 a.m. It is not possible to tackle this problem by using regular date time, but there is another library called Noda Time, effectively takes time zone and daylight saving times into effect. So in this case, I installed the Noda Time package and I added the using Noda Time. And finally, by using system clock, that instance that get current instant will give me an instant irrespective of the current zone. Then by using this true now, which is the current instant, I can convert it to UTC or I can convert it to a particular time zone, in this case in London. For example, if I create a local date time and if I call at strictly method of London time zone, then it will throw 
a skip time exception because at that time daylight saving shift can occur actually last time it occurred in 2019 March 31st so as a summary I would recommend to use node time instead of date time as much as possible especially if your work involves daylight saving scheduling or different time zones